All right, welcome everybody. Today we're going to talk about 12 things I like in no particular order. And let's jump right into it. Number one is raclette. If you don't know it, let me explain. So raclette is a Swiss dish. For it, you need this kind of ovens where you can put cheese in the bottom and then other stuff on top. And then what you do is you take the, the molten cheese and you put it on top of potatoes plus some spices they forgot the spices here and that's my favorite food of all time ever you really have to try it if you have never done it then come to switzerland and try raclette random thing number two is my home gym this is really an investment i'm super happy about i spent around a bit more than thousand francs which would be around the same in dollars here it is uh, it has basically the equipment you really need to get going and I'm super happy because here in Switzerland the gym membership can cost about double uh, per year and to think about all the time that I'm not spending traveling to go to the gym and the fact that I'm actually using it which was the big, biggest risk I'm using it about five times a week so I'm super happy about that and since we're talking about training I'll take the opportunity to mention the workout program that I'm using it's an online product Athlianix uh, I'm quite happy I'm doing it. I've been doing it for the last four months and I think I'll finish this week with the final exam, which I'll certainly fail and then I'll probably start all over again. But uh, it's really cool. Uh, it, it varies a lot and tells you day, day after day what you have to do. And you need less equipment than I already have if you want to do this. Anyway, random thing that I like, number three, is my video production setup. This is really something that I've worked basically the last year to set up and right now it looks a bit like that sorry if it looks messy but everything has its own place what you can see in the picture is there are two big lights one is right now pointing at my face the other one is pointing at the basically the wall behind me then you can see the microphone which is it's probably going to be noisy this one here then you can see my laptop what you cannot see is the camera but you can see the tripod on which the camera normally is my headset and on the side you can see a Wacom touchpad which my brother gave me uh, which is what I used to make all the drawings on white background and this is really the last iteration of a lot of attempts to make my the, my video production faster and more agile and um, I'm happy about this system because it allows me to produce uh, a video in basically a couple of hours. Obviously, there, there is the whole software side of, of the setup, which is also interesting, but I might talk about that another time. Let me know if you're interested. Number four, again, in no particular order, is systems that simplify life. This is perhaps one of my deepest interests in life. Many of the things that I mentioned in this list belong to that category. Even the filming setup that I just showed is a system that in a sense simplifies life. What I mean with systems that simplify life is really the capacity to design something that then takes care of a whole area of your life and then uh, you only have to take care of managing and improving the system instead of that whole area of life. Number five is cleaning Saturdays. Really, this is something that I've come to love um, in the last half a year or year or so. I've been living with my girlfriend for a few years and we moved in our new apartment um, a year and a half ago and we spent a lot of time, a lot of Saturdays, talking about what furniture to buy, where to put it and it has been a really fulfilling project for me. I don't know why, it's, it's just something that even now uh, we are uh, slowly adapting it and improving it and beautifying our environment. And this is something that I can really enjoy. I can really enjoy spending the whole Saturday like cleaning and do administrative things. This kind of domestic uh, feeling that a Saturday spent at home can have really gives me a, a feeling of peace and fulfillment. Thing number six are mental models. And this falls under the category of systems that simplify your life. Some of these systems are mental, are ways to look at the world are, and ways to think about the world that allow you to kind of see, okay, this is irrelevant and I can focus on that. And uh, I've been exploring mental models with you all this year and here are just a list of things that I found really interesting. Let's take one, for example, I like the second last model, which is the Kaizen model, which is the idea of if you have something to do that is hard, you just simplify it down to the thing that you can make without effort and there is a huge difference between doing that and nothing perfectionism can be an obstacle to actual progress because it 
uh, can crush us so much that we do nothing and instead following the Kaizen principle of doing the thing that you can do without effort all the time is extremely powerful because then you act and as you act you improve and the 1% improvement is a 30 something times improvement in a year. So I, I really love that principle and it's just one of uh, a lot that one can use in life and um, in a sense this is what the channel is about so so you will hear much more about these kind of mental models in the future thing number seven is listening to smart people think this is really something a lot that i keep rediscovering when i discover someone new that has some kind of again mental model or way or, or, or way of looking at the world um, that is new here you can see a, a list of people that i'm following right now but i i follow different people in the past I noticed that there is always a season for me with some thinker. I spend the time with the thinker and then I in kind of until these models are integrated in my life and then perhaps I get a bit bored and then there is something new. I've heard what I needed to hear. And just recently, uh, Eric Weinstein um, mentioned Jordan Hall and this is the guy. This has been a rabbit hole for me. I've, I've went down into the Jordan Hall rabbit hole. Super interesting. I might talk about that in another video. Number eight, and I, I don't want to sound arrogant, but <laughs> I'll explain why, is uh, my Instagram account. And the reason is, in the past, I've tried to kind of do some online marketing with my Instagram account, and I was never happy. I was trying to use it in a way, I, I kind of like cut pieces from my YouTube videos and put them there, but I, I wanted to use it without caring about it. And now I found a way to use it that, that, that I like because it's basically, it has basically become a, a repository of my mental models. Uh, often when I make a video here, I then kind of make a drawing that kind of summarizes the whole concept or a few of them and then I post them on Instagram. And so um, I really like it now because it has a uni unique style and so that's, that's a little thing that I, that I am happy about in my life. <laughs> Number nine is programming. Um, I keep saying I'm an engineer and what, what kind of engineer am I? I I'm actually a, a software engineer, uh, in particular a web engineer, and this is what my day job is. Again, programming for me falls into the same category of building systems that then take care of things. And then you only need to take care of the system. And, and this is like a, an extremely powerful concept. And I, something that I really love about programming, which is quite unique, is that you never do the same thing twice. If you're doing the same thing twice, you're making a mistake. Um, so there is this concept called dry, don't repeat yourself. And to me, it's the core concept of programming. You do something and then when you do it and you notice actually this is the same thing I've already done, perhaps with some uh, slight modifications, then you kind of put it together and make it parameterizable. Uh, and so, so you don't repeat yourself. And this explains the power of programming in general. And so this is really just one aspect of um, this more general idea of building systems. So number 10, let's go back to something a bit more whimsical. Uh, we have Age of Empires 2. Age of Empires 2 is the game I've played most in my life. It's a strategy game. It came out, I think, in 1998 or 99. And Every year I keep doing some land parties with friends uh, or, or, or my brother and it's, a, it's an endless source of fun. Uh, it's the last game I've ever really uh, played so intensely because tendentially I, I'm not a consumer of things. Uh, I, I like to do my, my own things, but this game, that is just, uh, <laughs> I enjoy it so much. And, and this is, again, we can take the, the way I play this game as an example of how I play my whole life, because what I do is I invest everything in, in the economy. So I build houses and I build people and these people then basically I send them all to collect wood and, and food and gold and everything. And then I reinvest everything again in the economy and I only in the last minute when I'm being attacked, I build barracks to, uh, to again fight against these people. So I take the long exponential route rather than the linear tactical route. So I, I prefer strategy much more than, than tactics. I, I'm not this kind of fast thinker that can d make decisions in a quick way. I kind of, again, like to build a system that then takes care of things in a way amplified way, but um, it takes much more time. And if you look at, I don't, I don't know, my YouTube channel, 
that's that's the way I'm doing it. I, I, I spent much more time thinking about the setup so that I can do a, one video every day uh, instead of thinking about okay, what should these videos really be about? You know, um, for me, it's more important that I can do something every day day and learn from it uh, and then improve. And so. Again, like it's the same way I play Age of Empires. <laughs> Another video game is Legend of Zelda. I love this again. It came out about the same time and uh, it kind of remained impressed in my memory. I probably had the right age for that. I still remember this. If you have never played it, I mean, it's a fantasy um, game where you play the hero and the hero has like humble beginnings in a little village. And you spend already a lot of time in this little village and the bits of the surroundings. And you think you have done already a lot and then suddenly the, the gates open to this huge world and you think, oh, there is much more. And then at a certain point you kind of find this sword that is a magic sword and then when you take it, you, you wake up seven years later and uh, the whole world has changed and so it's kind of double the size again. And it, this experience of exploring a whole world, that, that, that was a great experience for me. And then of course all the archetypal structures and of, of the storytelling were extremely compelling to me and um, it's still dear to my heart today. And then we have thing number 12, my snacks. As you see, like this video is a bit random. Why do I love my snacks? A again, it's because it's kind of a system that I kind of developed over time. <laughs> um, my, my goal is to not eat too many sweet things. Um, and obviously the weakness is in between meals. I basically have my system with which I create my snacks that are, uh, as you can see, it's this Tupperwares above on the left. Each column is one day. And basically each of these Tupperware contains a few carrots, a few blueberries and, and, and what you see. And that's it. It's, it's just, again, like a small system that prevents me from um, going overboard with chocolate or, or cookies or things like that. When I feel like a snack, I just take one of those and that's it. I usually prepare like five days all at once. And then we have bonus thing number 13, my routines. <laughs> and again, like you see the pattern, it's again a system, something that I developed slowly over time, iteratively, um, thanks to books I've been talking about and reading on the channel. So I have my morning routine that you can see here. By the way, this is an Instagram post that I'm just sharing. Uh, and then I have my evening routine. And the third routine that I have is the routine that I use to build videos or to basically my whole online social media activity. So what I do to make a video plus then what I share on Instagram. Again, that's also a routine. And I don't think that living a very systematic life as I'm kind of trying to do is the right thing to do or even a good thing to do. It's just the way I like to live my life. Um, it has some advantages for sure, but if you don't really enjoy that, the, it might take out kind of the spontaneity. For me, I live spontaneity on the level of adapting the routines and then the, the fun of trying to follow them and seeing the impact that they have in my life. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this kind of weird uh, random collection of things. You certainly can see uh, patterns and things that kind of um, where my character comes into play. I hope you had fun. Um, let me know and see you again tomorrow. Bye.